Single mom, and money education tips for your children are essential for your success. Watch this to find out why. Thank you ladies for coming back to visit your favorite money educational channel. Now let's get down to business ladies. Most parents discuss sensitive subjects with their children, such as sex, alcohol, and other abused substances. In addition to teaching kids how to drive, they also impart a few life lessons. On the other hand, money always appears to be an issue that isn't discussed. It's difficult to talk about money with children, particularly if the parents believe they don't know enough about it themselves and are fearful of teaching them incorrect ideas. There is a guide in the book on making your youngster a money expert. Even if you're not an author, Beth Kopliner offers a few guidelines to follow when discussing money with your children. These are more like suggestions to remember, says Kopliner. A financial drill sergeant isn't what you want to do with your kids, but rather to keep them in mind and utilize them when the time comes. According to Kopliner, the majority of learning occurs in ordinary teaching opportunities. As a result, here are some guidelines for raising money genius 1. Don't wait until the last minute. Research conducted by the University of Wisconsin-Madison School of Business shows that many toddlers as young as 3 years old have a basic understanding of economic concepts such as value and trade, they can delay gratification and make decisions now that they are older. At this age, children are eager and capable of comprehending more than we may think. This is a perfect time for a child to educate about where their money originates from and how to pay for things, particularly if they're playing a game like this. It's a great time to teach patience to young children. Many children have been subjected to the marshmallow test. They have been presented with one marshmallow and informed that should they not consume the treat immediately after receiving it, they would be presented with a second one. Researchers tracked this group of youngsters for decades and discovered that those kids who waited for a second marshmallow ended up substantially more successful as adults, they had stronger relationships obtained greater levels of education and made more money on average. The good news is that you may learn patience and delayed gratification in various settings like the grocery store checkout line or vehicle journey to the park. A good strategy is to tell them that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that they can receive what they desire if they are patient and kind. This is a perfect time for families to start setting aside money. You can teach your children the significance of conserving money by doing it with them. Whether you're purchasing pizza or taking a vacation to the water park to tailor it to the reader's age group, children's age levels must be considered while delivering a lesson says Copliner. The concept of opportunity cost can be taught to elementary school students that money has value where it comes from, and that money can be exchanged for things. This can be done by teaching preschoolers that money has value comes from where it comes from, and can be exchanged for things. This is the point at which children get attracted to earning money to do household tasks other than housework, teaching the notion of interest and how certain institutions keep your money secure. While providing you a tiny proportion of free money at this age is a terrific opportunity. According to Copliner, it is never a good idea to be without money, especially in middle school. While it is perfectly okay for a child to save up for a specific item, they should concentrate on spending less than they save. High school is a great time to learn how to budget and prepare for crucial future expenses. Like college studies indicate that students whose parents foot the whole bill for their children's education do worse academically than those whose parents chip in some costs. The consensus is that children are more likely to make good use of a sacrifice if they have a stake in it. 3. Teaching children about the realities of taxes is also a terrific idea at this time of year. Many young people have their first taste of working and earning money in this setting. Right now is the best moment to explain to students why their taxes will be lower than anticipated. In this section, we may talk about the many deductions that can be taken before taxes are taken out, such as 401k contributions and health insurance. Additionally, I'm teaching that it's a good idea to contribute to a 401k at least as much as your company is willing to match because this is free money. It's also a good idea to explain that the federal, state and occasionally municipal income taxes collected from their paychecks enable the government to support everything from schools to roadways and more. In addition, they'll have to pay into Medicare and Social Security. They must be able to distinguish between gross and net compensation the amount you make before tax is your gross pay. After taxes and other deductions, your net pay is the amount you get. Using an example, if he deposits $500 into an investment account like a Roth IRA or an index fund at the age of 16, 
With an 8% growth rate, this $500 would transform into over $20,000 by the time he is 65 years old. Rather than being intimidated by the subject of money. Kids who are taught about it in an age-appropriate manner like it for anecdotes are a good option. When we use tales to deliver a point, everyone is more likely to retain the information, not just children. It's the same when it comes to money. Many parents are aware that lecturing their children results in either not listening or doing the reverse of what they were taught. Rather than simply stating that credit card debt is bad, tell your high school student about a friend who couldn't get an apartment because of her high credit card debt from overspending the year before. Stories can show how decisions have consequences without sounding like a lecture. And stories stick in kids' minds much better than information. 5. Use real numbers for informing a child that they should start saving for retirement when they are 18 is more likely to stick in their minds than telling them that investing $300 a month in their retirement account would begin when they are 18. By the time they reach 65, over $1 million will be in their bank accounts. When high school students hear the number $1 million, they are more likely to pay attention and realize the necessity of setting aside money for their future. One way to get the annual percentage rate of return on a savings account is to plug in the interest rate variables the amount saved and the period into a free online calculator. Compound interest on an investment may be calculated using this government website called Investors.com. It is not sponsored in any way. Don't reveal too much about yourself financially, since studies have shown that kids whose parents reveal too much about their financial background are more likely to engage in the same practices. Similar to this you may be promoting this habit to your children. If you tell them about the time you spent all the money you had to go on a road trip with your girlfriend, because even if you had attempted to convince him otherwise, there is no need for your children to know that you've made poor financial decisions in the past six, identify and then let go of whatever financial baggage you may have. The majority of people's financial habits are formed due to their parents' financial patterns, whether they mimic their parents' choices or move in the exact opposite direction. Many individuals attribute their bad financial habits to their upbringing. Keeping an eye on how your parents manage money and its influence on your own financial decisions is always a good idea. However, you should never use this as an excuse to justify your own terrible financial decisions. Avoid instilling in your children a fear of money, even though it's difficult at first to avoid transferring these bad feelings about money to your children. As Copliner advises, Recognize your financial baggage and then put it behind you and adopt a positive attitude toward money. 7. Keep your financial conflict private. A study in personal finance found that more than three times as many young adults with $500 or more in credit card debt had parents who often fought about money as children, you and your spouse will probably not agree on all financial matters. However, it's necessary to protect children from the complexities of money debates, Parents should be given a time-off period to address money matters solely. And if it's for the kids, you can just tell them that we haven't decided yet whether we'll be able to afford it. Please wait for a response from us. If you take the time to think things out before making a choice, you're not impulsive. Don't worry about keeping up with the Kardashians or the Joneses. It's only natural for parents to behave like everyone else. And our media-driven society doesn't help in this regard. Even so, it's critical to resist the temptation to make comparisons between your family's financial decisions and those of others, particularly while your children are around. Study after study has shown that comparing one's financial situation to others is detrimental to one's happiness, particularly in today's social media-driven environment. In particular, this may be a hazardous snare. A good way of teaching youngsters that keeping up with their peers or family is a bad idea is by letting them know that they aren't alone. Avoid engaging in that kind of conduct yourself. I don't think kids should care about which parent earns more money. Putting monetary figures on when mom makes money may convey to young kids that one parent's contribution is more essential, particularly if you both work full-time and avoid addressing who earns more. A stay-at-home parent's worth may be taught and made evident if one of them is a stay-at-home. In parent, this is a job and should be done by one parent instead of hiring a third party. In general, it is preferable to show unity to be effective. Don't show off your terrible money habits in front of your children. Even though it may seem apparent, this one may be spoken instantly. When it comes to money, it's easy to utilize the phrase to as I say, not as I do, whatever flaws you may have. 
When it comes to negative money habits, you mustn't set the standard. When it comes to money, it is better to do your best to get your finances in order than to just speak about it. All right, people. That wraps it up for this fast review of the novel. Even if Beth Copliner does not influence you, you can still be a money genius. There is just too much material in this book to be adequately conveyed in because of this. I strongly suggest this book for single parents with young children. Ladies, please comment below and hit the like button toodles.